Hi there, it's Tyler from Nelly Security, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at our new active deterrence line of surveillance product. <laughs> These new cameras are perfect for if you really want your security cam These new cameras are perfect for if you really want your security cameras to be noticeable. Maybe you need to put these cameras in an area where people are parking when they're not supposed to be or an area that's getting a lot of vandalism. Whatever your reasoning may be, if you're looking for a camera that can warn intruders visually and audibly that they're being watched, then these cameras are for you. Let's go ahead and jump into the review. We currently have two cameras available in our active deterrent series. We have the NSC Deterrence BT-1 and the NSC Deterrence DM-2. And really the only difference between these two cameras is their form factor and their infrared abilities. Now the bullet camera obviously is a little bit larger than the turret camera. It also has a longer infrared range. This thing can see in the dark for up to 240 feet. The turret camera on the other hand is quite a bit more compact and smaller. Uh, but it does have a standard infrared range of about 100 feet. Other than that, these two cameras have the exact same specs. Crisp 4 megapixel video at a smooth 30 frames per second, a 2.8 millimeter fixed lens with a wide horizontal field of view, a slot for an onboard SD card with up to 128 gigabytes of storage, but there are three main features which really make these cameras stand out as deterrence cameras. First of all, it's got intelligent motion detection. This means it can actually recognize human beings and vehicles. Second, it's got an onboard strobe light, which is motion activated, to draw attention to the camera and warn intruders of its presence. Finally, it has speakers so that it can give audible warnings, such as a siren, a voice, or a combination of both. If you have an H-Series NVR, you can just plug these into the PoE switch on the back for instant plug-and-play video. Video. And with the SD card slot on the bottom of the camera, you can also set this up as a standalone camera. With its smart motion detection, these cameras are actually prime candidates for standalone cameras, and we'll get to that all here in a little bit. Now before we jump on the interface and get these cameras set up for maximum deterrence, I do want to take a quick look at a standard motion detection camera's interface. You probably recognize this screen. Basically, anytime the pixels change within the red area of this image, the camera is going to think that motion is happening. The biggest downside to these standard motion detection cameras is that it cannot detect the difference between movement. For instance, if a leaf is blowing through the wind, or if a burglar is coming into your house, this camera won't be able to tell the difference and it will send you a notification either way. Check out these recordings from another motion detection camera overnight. Even though I didn't have continuous recording turned on, you can see that it was recording pretty much all night with a few exceptions. But as I click around here and review these videos, you can see that there's really no motion happening at all. In fact, you have to zoom in really close to see that it's actually these little bugs and dust particles flying around that's triggering the motion detection. That's where these deterrence cameras and their smart motion detection comes into play. Obviously, pixel-based motion detection won't work for these cameras. Since it produces a motion-activated strobe light and siren, you can see how this could be problematic. Your siren would constantly be going off pretty much 24-7. But the smart motion detection of these deterrence cameras is like pixel-based motion detection on steroids. These cameras can detect motion as far as the camera can see. But unlike standard cameras, these deterrence cameras use smart filters to make snap decisions about whether or not the motion that it detects is actually important. It can recognize human beings and vehicles and only trigger the motion detection alarm accordingly. Now you can set it up to target either humans or cars, or both humans and cars. Now as I'm sure you can see by now, this smart motion detection really is essential for a deterrence camera. You can rest assured knowing that if you hear your siren sounding or if you see your strobe light going off, it's because there's real motion going off in the camera's field of view, either from a human or a vehicle. Your siren will not go off randomly in the middle of the night just because the camera sees some bugs flying around the parking lot. Keep in mind that the strobe light and the siren are totally optional. These cameras can still be very useful to you even if you're not interested in the deterrence features. As we mentioned earlier, if you're primarily interested in a standalone camera using an SD card, these cameras and their smart motion detection will be able to save you so much space. By cutting out all those false alarms, you'll be able to hold on to your recordings way longer than you would be able to with a standard camera. Once again, here's that playback for a standard pixel-based motion detection. And here's the playback for these deterrence cameras over the same stretch of time. All right, I've talked about these cameras enough. Now let's go ahead and jump into these interfaces and see what these cameras can do. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, these cameras 
do work with plug and play with H series recorders, which means all you have to do is plug this camera into the back of the NVR here, plug it in, wait just a few minutes for the camera to boot up. Now, while we're waiting for this camera to pop up, I do want to warn you, if you're using an H-Series NVR, please go check our website to make sure you have the latest firmware downloaded. That's because these cameras are pretty new, so for full functionality, you're going to want to upgrade to the newest firmware. And there we have video. Now to get this smart motion detection set up, we're going to go into the menu, system, and event. So to get this to work, we're actually going to go into smart event. And you can see we have a number of options available to us. I'll quickly run through these different smart events using our bench test camera here, and then we'll apply it to the camera outside and see some real world examples. Line crossing is really easy. We enable this and draw an area. We can simply draw a line. And here's the cool thing about this camera. We can choose if we want to target humans or vehicles. Obviously there's not gonna be a car running through this room, so we're only going to target humans right now. Anytime a human crosses this blue line, it's going to trigger the alarm. So we can tell by the alarm and by the, and by the recording symbol up in the corner that this has detected human motion crossing that blue line. Now check this out. If I switch this to vehicle and uncheck human, I can cross this line all I want and it's not going to detect motion. You can adjust the sensitivity here, play with that however you need to. Intrusion detects any motion happening within a predefined area. You can adjust the time threshold to adjust the amount of time it takes before the alarm goes off. So that way someone can step into that box for a few seconds without actually triggering the alarm. Sometimes you may find that in order to get one of these smart events to work, you need to set up min size and max size. The minimum size being the smallest object that the motion detection will track. The max size being the largest object that it will track. You can see now that it is recording uh, based on that symbol in the top right hand corner. Now I haven't actually linked the intrusion event to a strobe light or a, uh, an audible warning, but that's why you're not seeing any light or hearing any sounds right now. Now at this time, through the H-Series NVR, we actually can't edit the settings for the strobe light or the onboard alarm. To do that, we have to actually bypass the NVR and log directly into the camera's web interface. So I'm gonna hop on the computer now, we're gonna get the alarm set up, we're gonna get the strobe light set up, and then we'll go from there. I'm gonna go to configuration, event, smart event. And you'll remember it was the intrusion detection that we set up this box, but that we didn't have linked to our alarm or to our strobe light. So to fix that, we're gonna go to linkage method, flashing alarm, and audible warning and hit save. If I step into the box and start moving around. So we have our light and our audible warning linked to the intrusion smart event. But if we go into configuration and go into basic event, we can actually configure the flashing alarm and the audible alarm a little bit more. So for the flashing alarm output, we can change the amount of seconds that it flashes for. Flashing frequency, this is how fast it flashes if you want it to fast, if you want it to flash very quickly, or if you want it to flash very slowly. And then for the audible alarm output, we can adjust the volume if we need to turn it down. We can adjust the amount of times that the sound is sounded. We can also change the alarm sound type. Now there are all these different sounds we can choose. We can make it say something like, Warning, this is a restricted area. Or, Attention please. The area is under surveillance. Or if we want to be a little cordial and inviting to our guests. Welcome. You can even have a combination of the siren and a voice. Danger. Please keep away. All right, I'm back at the NVR interface now, and I want to talk about practical application. 
What are some instances that you might find this camera useful? Maybe you're trying to stop copper theft in your AC unit. Maybe you have a no parking zone that you're monitoring. Any area that gets a lot of vandalism boat docks or other restricted areas. There really is an endless amount of uses for these cameras. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on our uh, back parking lot camera here to see some real world examples. So here I am setting up two different line crossings on our back parking lot. The idea is to keep tabs on anyone entering the parking lot from either one of these two entrances. I've changed the direction of each line crossing so that the alarm only goes off when people enter the parking lot and not when they leave. Finally, my target here is vehicles and not humans. You can see that as I turn the corner here and drive past that line, the camera recognizes my vehicle is a vehicle and so the alarm goes off. Welcome. Please notice that the area is under surveillance. However, as I approach the other side of that parking lot and exit, since I'm going the opposite direction of the line crossing, the alarm does not go off. All right, next I'm going to set up an intrusion event in hopes to prevent parking on our loading dock. I set the time threshold at 10 seconds so that the alarm won't go off if someone's just passing through or turning around. And once again, I'm targeting vehicles here. So let's watch this in action. Warning. This is a no parking zone. Now let's set up a region entrance event. Now this is similar to intrusion. The only difference is while intrusion events detect motion anytime something moves within that region, region entrance, as the name implies, only detects motion when something enters the region. So for this I'm going to set up an event to keep people away from a certain area. This would be a good idea if we were getting a lot of vandalism here against this wall, for instance. So for this, I will target humans instead of vehicles. Warning, this is a restricted area. Please keep away. Finally, the opposite of that is region exit. This will only detect motion if someone or something leaves the predefined region. So here I'm going to draw this region around these cars and set the target to vehicle. Now anytime someone drives their car out of this parking area, the alarm will go off. Now there's one more thing I want to show you before we wrap up this video, and that's how to review your deterrence camera footage. But before we get to reviewing the recorded playback, I want to show you something cool about the live view. If you go up here and click target detection and make sure this smart detection is checked, then you'll actually get live updates as the camera captures vehicle or human movement. So I do have line crossing enabled on this camera and as I cross this line in the middle of the screen, it should recognize me as a human and update you directly from the live screen. We can hit play. All right, now I'm gonna go into menu, click playback and select my deterrence dome and my deterrence bullet. Now from here we can create custom searches and with the custom search we can actually choose an event type. So for instance if I click line crossing, so here it shows me all of the line crossings from the past couple of days. And then once I do that I can actually click this custom button down here on the normal playback menu to see this custom search show up visually. Anything red is going to be my custom event. So if I go back to that red line on this timeline, you can see I was crossing the line at that moment in time. Another way you can search on your NVR is actually for human and vehicle targets. To do that, I'm actually gonna go up here to the menu and click File Management. From here, I can click on Human Files and Vehicle Files. I can click Target Picture to see exactly what the human was that triggered that motion detection event or the source picture, which just shows me the whole thumbnail of the entire video. And then I can click a video to watch the motion happening on the playback. I'm here logged into the web interface of my recorder. I want to show you something about the live view here. 
You can see that here I have this line visible to show you where the line crossing is on my turret camera. And on this camera, there's this square that shows you where the, it's currently set up to exit region. And you'll also notice this green box that is appearing around me from time to time. That's just the camera recognizing that I'm a human being. Check out the green box around me as I cross this line. Did you notice that as I crossed the line, the green box and the blue line turned red? That's to tell you that the alarm was triggered. And check this out. I'm gonna go into configuration. I'm gonna switch it from human to vehicle. And as you can see, the line is still turning red, the box is still turning red, but the alarm on the camera is not going off. So it's still recognizing me as a human crossing that line. However, because it's set to vehicle targeting, the alarm's actually not gonna go off. Now, if you'd like to see these areas directly from your live view, all you have to do is go into configuration, go into your local menu, and make sure rules is enabled. And as you can see, even in the playback menu, we can see the line and the squares. The line just turned red because it recognized me as a human, and I crossed that line. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope it was able to help you see just how awesome these new deterrence cameras are. If you're interested in purchasing one, you can visit us at www.nellysecurity.com and search for deterrence in the search bar, or you can click the links below to check out the product page. As always, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. We have experts standing by waiting for your call. They're always happy to help. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook for more surveillance videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.